Throughout our world's history, people have longed to connect with a higher power, something greater than ourselves that would help us find meaning and purpose in our lives. Through music, dance, and community celebration, different cultures around the world have found their own path to enlightenment and inner peace. But there's also a downside to religion. Thousands of years of power struggles, terrorism, oppression, extreme violence, and death. All done in the name of God. That God hates anybody who's not in their church. For as long as I can remember, I was taught to respect and accept the religious beliefs of others, and for a while I assumed everyone else was taught the same thing. But as I got older, and I became more aware of the history of war and terrorism associated with religion, I was shocked to see that this type of behavior still exists in our present time. I thought, if our political and religious leaders don't take action to put an end to the violence and intolerance in our world, there might not be a world for my generation, and no way humanity could ever live in peace. But then I met Arun Gandhi, who helped show me that one person can change the world. Arun is the grandson of the legendary Mahatma Gandhi, who gave the world a philosophy of nonviolence and brought India to its independence. Gandhi inspired many people, such as Martin Luther King Jr., Nelson Mandela, and the Dalai Lama. Arun has continued his grandfather's legacy and is a powerful voice for nonviolence in our world. I don't remember the first time I met Arun because I was only about two years old at the time. My mom, who's the minister at Unity of San Luis Obispo, invited him to speak about nonviolence. This past year, he came to San Luis again, and I had an amazing opportunity to talk with him. Everybody has their own way of uh, worship, and we need to respect all those ways. As my grandfather would say, that uh, religion is like climbing a mountain. We are all going up to the same peak, so why should it matter to anybody which side of the mountain we choose to climb up? He believed that God exists in every human being in their soul, in their hearts. And when we kill other human beings or we hurt other human beings, we are killing or hurting God. He also believed that heaven and hell is here, right on earth, and we created ourselves. So if we be behave properly, if we have love and respect for all of humanity, then we are creating a heavenly atmosphere around us. But if we are filled with hate and prejudice and anger and we reflect that in our relationships with others, we are creating a hell for ourselves. What about people who believe that their way of worship is the only way? Well, there is, you know, it, it's not a question of uh, how we worship, but how we practice that worship that is important. I decided to go out into my community and find religious leaders who are making a conscious effort to embrace diversity. Probably the, the best uh, example of that would have uh, been the Second Vatican Council, and we're looking at the 50-year anniversary of that. Uh, 50 years seems like a long time, but in the context of the Catholic faith, it's not that long at all. That was the moment I think it really uh, opened itself to the world and said we are all brothers and sisters in the same enterprise. So my role 
is primarily within the Jewish community, helping people to really study so that they can be agents of peace and justice in the world, um, and also to build bridges to other religious faiths. I joined a diversity coalition last year um, after a cross burning here, and um, actually it's basically promoting diversity and kind of educating people about different faiths, and I just recently attended um, a cultural competency training um, just to have people from different ethnic groups, religious groups, um, racial groups come together and try to understand one another. Another. At Unity of San Luis Obispo, every week before our time of meditation, we bless all those people who are worshiping anywhere around the world. And I always say that the unconditional love of God is so powerful that it speaks to each of us in a language that we can understand and embrace. Choosing a life of nonviolence begins with understanding the concept of passive violence. We commit passive violence all the time, every day, consciously and unconsciously. Things like discrimination, oppression, looking down on people, teasing people, name-calling and prejudices and, and all of these things that we do. And that generates anger in the victim. And the victim then resorts to physical violence to get justice. So it is passive violence that fuels the fire of physical violence. So logically, if we want to put out the fire of physical violence, we have to cut off the fuel supply. And since the fuel supply comes from each one of us, we have to become the change that we wish to see in the world. And the truth is that peace in the world begins with me, with peace in my heart, with peace in your heart making peace with all of the issues that cause us resentment. And once we heal ourselves, once we accept ourselves, we can move about in the world accepting others. So relationships ideally in, in the philosophy of nonviolence must be built on the five, four concepts of respect, understanding, acceptance, and appreciation. We have to respect ourselves and respect each other and respect our connection with all of creation. And this is very important because a lot of people today tell me that we are independent individuals and we will do whatever we like and it's nobody's business. We are not independent individuals. We are interdependent, interconnected and interrelated. And what happens to us happens to others, and what happens to others happens to us. And we have to respect that. And if we respect that, then we will understand who we are and what we are and why are we here on earth. We are not born by accident. We are here for a purpose. And it's not a selfish purpose. It is a purpose of creating a world and creating a community of peace and harmony. And when we understand that, then we will be able to accept each other as human beings and not identify people by the labels that we have put upon ourselves. We're all in this together. There is no separation from any of us. We all co-create each other. Uh, we produce each other's lives and world and everything else. And so there is no them. I mean, the Qur'an actually says um, you've been created in, into nations and tribes so that you can get to know one another. If we could all look for that, that uh, one thing that is most true and most real, it would also be the thing that is uh, most loving and most kind, uh, and it would be whatever that we call God. Making this film has taught me that real change comes not by convincing others, but by living the principles of nonviolence and being an example to others. If we do this, we can lift ourselves from the level of the problem to the level of the solution. I have hope that we will.